this little arrangement that I've made for the introduction to Moonshield. Uh, just the very beginning of the piece where they've got acoustic guitars going, uh, you know, before before everything really kicks in. Huge shout out to uh, Melancholis for suggesting that I do this piece for this series. Um, it's such a great suggestion. This piece works just perfectly for kind of uh, what I like to think about uh, for pieces that um, I arrange for this series. Also, I haven't listened to this record, The Jester Race, in like many years. Uh, I kind of lost track of it, so it's been great getting back into this record. Funny thing about that is when I bought this record, it was like 10 or 12 years ago. I was a huge metalhead and I only listened to metal music like exclusively. Uh, I thought anything with acoustic guitars kind of sucked and uh, any other music beside that I thought totally sucked. So if uh, my old self then were to know that I'd be arranging this song for classical guitar um, in the future, I think I would have wanted to like kick my own ass, you know, because uh, I wouldn't have thought that was very cool. So it's just funny how things change. There's three things that I point out here in talking about playing this piece finger style. The first is, um, this is great arpeggio practice. There are some pretty unique combinations that you run up against here uh, in, in an attempt to play all the voices that are there. Um, the second is, um, there's a really cool three against two rhythmic thing going on, um, so it's kind of a, a nice study into polyrhythms and uh, you probably won't practice polyrhythm stuff in your, you know, normal arpeggio practice, or at least I don't. So this is a very cool place to throw in that feel and kind of get used to it. The third thing is um, there's a really strong connection here to a very popular piece in the classical music literature. So I'll throw that out for you too at the end. Uh, if you want to venture on over to classical music, uh, because it's not so different than this In Flames piece, believe it or not. Uh, great minds think alike indeed. So, um, the beginning... Uh, the fingering I use for the first long passage, uh, you've got these notes. Use whatever fingering you want. I started out by doing M and I there, because that's kind of an obvious choice, but I ended up changing it to A and I. So A, I, A, I, A, I. And that's because of what kind of comes next. Um, you've got this inter interesting choice where you've got to skip some strings, um, so you're going to have to double a finger or use a different fingering. and. Um, the solution I came up with is start out with all A I, A I A I A I A I A I A I. Now A I A I A M I M I M A I, and you end back up with A I on strings two and three, so you can start the cycle over again. So one more time, that's A I A. this is such a great arpeggio study is if you like this track of course they're playing with drums um, and if you're gonna play it you can't break rhythm you just can't you're gonna change the feel you're gonna ruin the feel um, it's just something something that I feel obligated not to do so that that was the inspiration for this fingering um, I certainly encourage people to come up with their own solutions I'm just showing you the one that I came up with because I've never done anything like this before like this specifically in dealing with this um, this arpeggio problem that needed a solution but come up with your own solution you can use this one or come up with your own just make sure that it doesn't break rhythm uh, if you're just practicing arpeggios you might you might not be as convicted to make sure you don't break rhythm I mean you certainly can be but the motivation might not be as strong 
if you're playing this piece and you're like, okay, I can't break with it. make you slow down and practice slower it'll make you come up with with good logical choices for you and uh, you can get a lot of good work out of that so the next section is very tricky for me the overall tempo that I play this arrangement at is solely based on how fast can I comfortably play this little second section because the first section it's not that hard to play a little bit faster, but then when I get to these double noted arpeggios, I'm like, oh, okay, you gotta slow down. So, this is really good arpeggio practice. Well, I say good because when I started working on it, uh, I really sucked at it. So, it felt good because I was like, well, obviously I don't know how to do this at all. But I've never really practiced these double note arpeggios. I remember practicing them a little bit like man, like five years ago or something a long time ago and then I kind of got out of it and never really went back so um, the idea here is to incorporate the harmony that they bring in okay uh, and then you want to do that top voice and you want to play them both because we're doing finger style and we can do that so the fingering here is A and M together for this first part and then I by itself. And because of the, the way that the thumb lines up, um, the first time it'll be with A and M, the second time it'll be with I. So a very balanced practice for your hand. This next chord is still the same grouping, just on a different set of strings got this grouping which was the best solution I could come up with um, but it exposed the pattern in my hand that I couldn't play at all and it's I and M together on strings three and two and then A by itself on the first string you know anything with M and A alternating back and forth is probably gonna uh, is probably going to need some practice or it might not feel as comfortable. Uh, as it turns out, if you put I and M together, it doesn't make it any easier. So, uh, every day I would do this exercise on open strings. It became a daily thing uh, because I just didn't know how to do this at all. so briefly in the piece you know you can't forget that you got to work on that also there are some finger doublings when you switch groupings which was a little bit tricky but it happens I mean I kind of try to avoid those but sometimes you just can't so um, if you relax fast enough you can you can jump strings with the same finger uh, so that was fun. Um, these double string arpeggios, even if you don't want to play this piece, um, you're doing groupings like this, doing all combinations, uh, certainly seems very beneficial. And you'll run up against that kind of stuff in playing classical guitar music. Um, kind of, um, you won't run up against it as like, well, you're going to play this whole passage with this fingering, but it's like you will have that fingering. You will have uh, two notes together and then one note by itself. It's kind of in disguise, you know, maybe in a slower piece or uh, something like that. So to practice all these combinations is really beneficial, I think. And it's fun to do. It's challenging. For this part, um, It's, it's, it's the most straightforward. I don't really know what's going on there in the track. I didn't want to look at any tabs for this piece. I really don't like to do that because uh, I just like to play what I hear. Sometimes though it's hard to hear 
what what is happening, especially when you have overdubs and things. And so I just kind of guess at what they're doing. I have no idea. It sounds close enough. But it's like sometimes I couldn't decide which note they're playing, so I just play both of the, both of them. Um, if you feel like you have a better solution to that part, then um, you're probably right. Um, so kind of moving on to the second topic, the polyrhythmic feel. Uh, I don't know what time signature this piece is in. I guess if I had to pick one, it would be 6-8. Uh, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. So that's not, uh, it's not too polyrhythmic, I guess. Um, if you thought about it in 3-4, it would feel pr it maybe a little bit more because you got a dotted dotted quarter. Feels a little bit more off beat, maybe. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. Uh, but to me, it feels like two different rhythms. You know, one is this. So if you think of that as a group of two, like one, two, one, two, one, two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe, but to me, the way that they play it is a very strong group of two. It's, it, it's, it sounds like da 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 not da 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 So there's your group of two against the group of three that's in the bass. And you gotta put those two feels together. They do line up nice. So it's a simple polyrhythm. A lot of polyrhythmic stuff lines up like way way later you got like this long cycle and they go around and then they finally hit and then they they go back around they circle back around again this lines up very quickly but still this feel is also very strong in the song It does feel like two different feels to me. Also, the fingering makes it feel like two different feels because, uh, like on one beat, you're gonna play the thumb with a certain finger. On the next beat, you're gonna play the thumb with the opposite finger. Or if it's a grouping of two, first beat, you'll do this, this grouping, next beat, you'll do this grouping. So it has a very back and forth feel to it. Um, just something that makes it certainly more interesting than the average arpeggio study. You know, the stuff that we do. You know, the classical guitar, arpeggios that we practice. Uh, you can actually make a polyrhythm out of that, but but uh, just on the page it's written as, you know, straightforward. Or... beat is there. It's very straightforward. There's the bass line, but it's it's very straightforward, okay? You can mess with it if you wanted to, rhythmically, but here it's like... It really does feel like a dance. And it's like two partners and they're doing different things. So, very, very cool. And um, if you haven't done much with polyrhythms, it's a great introduction to it, I think. Kind of basic, but... Um, if you can get in touch with the feel, um, you know, it can do a lot for your sense of rhythm, I think. The third topic uh, that I have for this arrangement is, um, this introduction really reminds me of a very popular classical music piece that's like right down the middle of the classical music repertoire and literature that they teach you. When I was an undergrad in music school, um, and you take like a literature course, you know, they select pieces and basically, I guess they say, well, you know, all of the students need to be exposed to these pieces. And this is one of the pieces that they said, 
uh, you know, you need to know this piece. It's a piece called Glassworks, written by a composer named Philip Glass. Philip Glass also has a very successful pipe and uh, bong making business. Just kidding, that's totally not true. But the reason why this piece reminds me of um, this In Flames piece is that they both have these three against two feels. So I would encourage you to listen to Glassworks. You can listen to um, kind of the, the first and last pieces are the same. It's in six movements I'm looking at here. So you can listen to opening or you can listen to closing, which is the, the last movement. And if you are familiar with this In Flames uh, part, this part of Moonshield by In Flames, this three against two that we were just talking about, you will be able to recognize it in Philip Glass's music. Th this Philip Glass piece actually came out, it was like in the early 80s, so way before uh, the Jester Race. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, um, if the guys in, in Flames had heard of it um, and thought it was really neat. It's some beautiful music. He's using this technique that uh, classical musicians call minimalism, which I guess is like saying all that you need to say in as few notes as possible. Um, this is what most popular music does. I mean, it's short, it's sweet. So uh, the concept of minimalism is, um, has had a huge impact. And Philip Glass, uh, when I was looking at this piece, I found a quote by him saying that um, he wrote this set of pieces that he called Glassworks because uh, he wanted to introduce his music to a more general audience. Uh, so whatever he was writing up until then, um, I guess it didn't sound as friendly uh, to the general listener as this piece does. But uh, certainly check it out. I have no idea of the literal influence or connection. I don't know, but you know, it could just be great minds think alike type of thing. Uh, and you've got uh, people in way different genres that are coming up with concepts that are that are actually really, really similar. And they're using very similar musical devices that work really well. They work so well that they can work in these dramatically different genres. Um, it's just, if you use the concept appropriately, uh, you just can't, uh, you can't touch the concept. You know, it's going to work well for the music that you want to create, uh, if you know how to use it.